Hello everyone, this is Minty Fries, and this is going to be a very quickly made video with minimal effort put in, so just sit tight. I just received something for which I intended to do a full, in-depth review right before I'm about to go on vacation, so I just wanted to get this video out quick and then I will do a full review later on. So what we have here is the Looking Glass display. It is a holographic display for 3D creators like myself and I got one to start contributing to its development as best I can. The Looking Glass Factory claims it works by a combination of volumetric display and light field technology. I am assuming it's the same kind of parallax view as one would see on a Nintendo 3DS, but I am not sure. Very appropriately, this nice case, lovely case, has a beautiful hollow foil sticker. It's just appropriate that a hologram viewer has some Pokemon card-like hollow foil. Now, I already opened this case, so you're not going to see a fresh unboxing. Sorry, I am impatient to a fault. Okay, here it is. So this block would have been right here to protect the display. We'll take that off. And as you can see, here it is. It has a very large, I think, acrylic block, which is used for the light field display. I don't really know how the technology works. Let's take this very carefully out of here. And here it is. The looking glass. With the acrylic block. So massive. So gorgeous. You would think that this would make for a very impressive holographic display. With this apparent depth of field. I mean, it's pretty thick. Just look at that. You would also have received a USB Type-C and an HDMI cable, but they're already plugged into my workstation and I didn't feel like taking them out. It also came with this uh, Leap Motion remote control. I'm assuming this is a touch screen right here. I believe you use this to interact with certain content, maybe spin a 3D model around or move forward. Reminds me of Google Daydream. Anyway, there's the looking glass. Let's hook it up to the computer. One thing you will immediately notice is that it's, well, a display. It functions just like a computer monitor. I mean, there's windows. Another thing you will immediately notice is that the resolution is... It's not good. I can see pixels. Huge pixels. You would have to walk pretty far away from this display in order to not see pixels. And if you don't believe me, can you read this? Didn't think so. Anyway, I am assuming that the intent for this device is to show you holograms when you are a fair few paces away. It is not great as a desktop hologram display. You want it to be at least 5 to 8 feet away from your eyes when using it. Unless I did something wrong, I mean I have a pretty powerful workstation, I have an i7 solid state drive, 32 gigs of RAM, I have an NVIDIA P2000 graphics card, they recommend a GeForce GTX 1060 or higher, I'm honestly not sure if mine is compatible, but I definitely set the resolution for this display to 2560 to 1600 like they recommend, so I don't know. All I know is I can see pixels when it's not even displaying 3D content. So it seems to me that it's just a low-res screen. It looks like my 2011 Gen 1 3DS. Sorry guys, but that's my impression. Well, the screen is one thing, and I don't mind looking at it from a distance. It's just that if I can put my phone screen in a cheap VR headset with huge magnifiers on it, and still have it look good when the screen is one inch away from my face, then is it too much to ask to have a nice looking display on a modern technology like this? I understand that it's using a lot of the HDMI cable's bandwidth, constantly channeling 45 simultaneous views at 60 frames per second to sell the illusion of a hologram, so that may be why they opted for a lower res screen. Who knows? 
Anyway, let's take a brief look at the included library for this thing. There's a lot of cool stuff here, and I can't wait to try it all. I loaded up the now infamous frog from their marketing material. This really makes you notice that some things look better than others. I mean, this frog looks amazing. There were some nice lighting effects on it. But this little voxel cube here, not so much. Very blurry. It really depends on the content with this display. Some things just look better than others. That frog just looks great. So that's restored some faith for me. Speaking of voxels, I was quite pleased to see that Voxatron is included in this library. I haven't messed around with Voxatron much yet, but I'm a fan of Pico 8. Both are made by the same company, so I'm sure I will have fun playing with that. Wrenches. Hmm. We'll get into that later. These wrenches look great on the display, though. Wasn't expecting that, honestly. With this guy here, one neat thing you'll notice is that the display shows you different stuff depending on your viewing angle. I don't know if it's tracking your eyes or what, or if that's just how light field volumetric combo displays work, but if I pan around here, you can see that the lights are changing. Kind of like those little hologram things with the plastic Fresnel ridges on them that make the annoying noise when you drag your finger across them. This looks amazing, quite frankly, and I think this sort of thing has a lot of potential for this display. Must have something to do with those 45 simultaneous views. I will say this about the display, the field of view is impressive. There is a huge grace zone for the viewing angle. I'm sure many of you have seen a Nintendo 3DS. Well, even with the latest model of that, there's a relatively narrow sweet spot where you can actually see the content in 3D. With the looking glass, you can look almost clear across the screen without noticing any weird artifacting. And it's so cool that you can see things by changing your point of view. Look how you can see behind the trees here. That's probably the most impressive part of this. It's probably the well wow factor they were going for. Glasses-free 3D you can see from almost any angle. Bravo! Here's what I'm most excited about, the model uploader. Here you can upload GLTF, GLB, and OBJ files. I'm going to imagine that GLTF and GLB allow for a certain degree of interactivity. That's exciting. I can't wait to upload some of my models here. I've already uploaded my Luigi's Mansion 3 model. It's hard to tell here, but it's looking pretty good, actually. I need to figure out how to easily export color GLTFs in Blender. This is an OBJ, no color here either. I need to figure that out. Anyway, here's my Pokemon Cerulean City model. This one got pretty messed up in the export, but it still looks okay. Here's a Yoshi story model I made. Again, it got messed up, but it's cool to see it as a hologram. Here's an Altair 8800 I made. Man, this is so cool. I love it. Alright, that's enough babbling. I have to get ready for a vacation. A full review will come shortly. Thank you for joining and don't forget to subscribe for that full review and other 3D content of mine. And please leave a like or a comment to let me know if you enjoyed this video or would like to see more hologram related stuff. I would enjoy hearing from you. Have a great day.